Hi, this is Terrell from Trailer Chicks, the clever chick. And what I'm going to do is go through the hookup process for the Airstream trailer. So the first thing that I like to do when I pull into camp is get my shore power hooked up. So I find my electrical cord and I store it in the external cubby so it's easy to get to. This is what the cord looks like and I'm going to go around to the other side of the trailer and hook it up. I'm on the other side of the trailer now and this is where the power supply is. So it's right above where you would hook up your TV satellite dish if you're traveling with one. But right now what I'm focused on is the power. So it's 30 amps. The cord that came with your new Airstream is the one that you want to use. It's been tested for the power level and it has all the safety features that you would want when running shore power to your trailer. So you open up the lid. For me, it's usually easier if I get down a little bit lower. There is one locking knob on the bottom that you want to be sure you line up. So you simply put it in and push it and then you're going to twist it to lock it in place. And then at that point, you turn on the cuff. Now here's a hint, do not use channel locks to tighten this. You really want it to be hand tightened and don't go beyond that because you will end up stripping and breaking the collar. And now you're ready to go plug it in to your source of power. Now that I've hooked up the power, I'm going to do the battery disconnect, which is on the inside of the trailer. And the reason why I want to do this is when you're traveling, I've had the power in the store position, but now that I have 110 electrical, I want to switch that over so that I'm not running my battery anymore. So I've had it in store. I'm going to push it up to click use. Switching from the store position to the use position is the only way to recharge your batteries. The light won't change when I do that. It'll stay lit the entire time. The only time the light will go out is when I'm actually not pulling any power at all. All right, we're back to the cubby that has all of the hoses and cords in it. So the next part of the hookup is gonna be attaching the hose for potable water or water that's safe to drink that you'll be using in your kitchen. So once again, I keep this outside in the external cubby. And I have my hoses, as you'll see later, I have them color coded. So I know that the white is for the water in the kitchen. And I, that way I won't get it confused with the hose that I use for the sewer flush line. This is something that you want to get straight. The sewer is on the top and the drinking potable water is on the bottom. It's also very clearly marked, so you shouldn't be confused. But again, that's one of those things that you probably want to double check just to make sure you're attaching the right hose and not to do it when you're rushed. So with the lower one, something else to know when you're Thinking about what the right hose is to use, you wanna make sure that on the label of the hose that it says that it's safe for drinking water, not all garden hoses are. So look for one that says that it's safe for potable water. And then you also don't need to get an external compression unit. In the past, you might've thought that you needed one to control the water pressure, but the new Airstream actually has an internal compression and also a filter. So you can just hit, hook it directly up to the to the hose. So I'm gonna unscrew the fitting from the outside. So I'm gonna line it up. And again, I'm gonna do reverse of what I would expect to do just to get it tightened. And it's, it's good, it's attached. All right, so now we'll go on to the next step. I just ran my water hose out to the other side where the, where the faucet is. And so next part of the hookup is gonna be attaching the sewer line. Now this is something that we've been doing ever since we've been camping and a lot of people really don't like it, but Airstream has made it very, very simple. So in the past, you may have been used to storing your sewer hose in the receptacle over here. But if you've used it before, you know there's some problems with how it's configured and I actually have a secret for what I keep back there and I store my hose in a better location and I'm gonna show you where it is right now. This compartment on the back of the Airstream makes a much better storage place for your sewer hose. The reason is
your hose has this 90 degree bend, which made it difficult for you to put it back in the receptacle on the side. But it fits really well in here and it's, you can completely isolate it. So now I'm gonna go back to the side of the trailer and show you how to attach it. Now we're gonna hook up the hose to the sewer outflow. And for this job, you really do wanna wear gloves. It's not gross and it's not dirty the way you, a lot of people think it is, but at the same time, you might get, come in contact, in the case you come into contact with something, you wanna be able just to be able to wash your gloves. So what you wanna do is simply screw off the cap to the outflow and use the end of the hose that has the hooks in it, so not the 90 degree, you'll line those up and you simply twist it into place and you're done with the attachment part. Now, the other thing that you wanna pay some attention to is the overall angle of the hose. And there's something called an accordion that you can put underneath to support the hose so that with the drainage, there won't be any blockages and so that the waste can flow evenly through. So when you're putting your hose down, just be sh sure that there aren't any kinks or sharp angles like this that would create difficulty in flushing. The second part of hooking up the sewer is that you want to you want to connect it to the ground. So you unscrew the top, take the 90 degree angle pipe, and you put it into the pipe. You want to make sure it's tightly in there, and then as an extra precaution, because when you start emptying the tanks, sometimes there'll be pressure buildup, and this this pipe will jump a little bit. Use the bricks or the rock that are handy to brace this just to make sure that it's extra secure. Now that we've hooked up the sewer pipe, the next thing we want to do is open our valves for the black water and also the gray water. So I'm going to start with the black water. The dump valve handle labeled main holding tank is your black water tank. The dump valve handle labeled auxiliary or wash holding tank is your gray water tank. Always dump your main holding tank or black water first. So when you dump the gray water, it will help flush the hose. It's pretty easy. All you do is you release the handle from its uh, brackets. You pull out, and not to be too gross, but there'll be some visual cues that the black water is actually going through. You'll hear some gurgling. Gravity will do its work. And you can actually, you'll be able to hear when most of, the, most of the black water has now been pushed down into the tube. As soon as that's done, go ahead, you'll close the valve and you'll do the same for the gray water. So you'll unhook the clasps, you'll pull out the valve, you'll listen again for the gurgling that you can hear the liquids going through the tube. Once it doesn't sound like anything else is coming through, go ahead and close it. When I started talking about hooking up the, the water in the sewer, I mentioned that I had a secret use for the old storage for the sewer pipe. So that's what I'm gonna show you where I, what I keep in there right now. So again, what I like to keep in here are my walking sticks. But you can keep anything in there that you want to have easy access to. That is a great place to keep it. All right, I'll see you later. Remember, proper maintenance and care will keep you and your Airstream happy for years to come. Find more tips on Airstream.com or visit your local Airstream dealer.